Here we're looking at a review of the rules of exponents, and uh, remember we've got uh, some kind of special things that happens when we start doing order of, uh, when we start doing operations that involve things that have exponents. Uh, the first is uh, zero as an exponent. Uh, just remember for any non-zero number a, uh, a to the zero power is one. So anything to the zero power essentially is one, except zero itself. Uh, zero itself is kind of a special case. Uh, zero itself is undefined when we do zero to the zero power. But uh, for something like this, uh, if I look at these examples, here I've got 27 to the zeroth power, and 27 to the zero power is just one. Okay. Uh, the next one, we've got uh, uh, 829,073 to the zero power. It's also going to equal one. And uh, then this next one, this one's a little bit tricky. It's negative 17 to the zero power, which is actually a negative one. Uh, because again, it would only be a positive one if we had negative 17 in parentheses to the zero power. Uh, so again, we have to watch out for that stuff. Uh, just like if we were raising it to the second power, it makes a, a little bit of a difference whether we have parentheses or not. It's the same thing here with the zero power. All right. Uh, negative exponents, remember negative exponents essentially turn things into fractions. A negative exponent is another way to express division. And so again, for any non-zero number, if I have a to the negative nth power, that's the same thing as doing one over a to, to the uh, nth power. <clears throat> so again, negative exponents, uh, we just take this thing and we, we flip the fraction. And that's how we turn a negative exponent into a positive exponent. So right now, this one we have uh, uh, 7 to the negative third power over 1, which is essentially 1 over 7 to the third power. All right, that's what a negative exponent does. And then we could simplify that, that 7 to the third power uh, if we needed to. Uh, same thing here. I've got x to the negative second power. The same thing as 1 over x to the positive second power. All right. And then uh, again here with this one, uh, this is going to change into a negative uh, 1 over 17 to the fifth power. Because again, that, that negative doesn't tag along for the ride because uh, it, it's not being applied uh, to the exponent because there's no parentheses. All right. When we multiply terms, remember that when we multiply two things, uh, two things that have a common base, uh, we add the exponent. So again, they have to have the same base. So uh, in the example, in the way this is displayed, we've got a to the m power and then a to the n power, uh, and we write that as a to the m plus n. So again, because we have the same base of a, we add the exponents, all right? So when we look at an example like this, uh, for this one, and uh, don't forget what we do with numbers. Like if I have 4 times 7, I know how to deal with 4 times 7, and that's never going to change. 4 times 7 is a 28, all right? But then I have like bases here with the x to the first power, because there's no exponent written, it's a 1, times an x to the first power. I add the exponents, that's going to be an x to the second power, okay? With the next one, I know how to multiply 3 and a 6. That gives me an 18. Uh, the exponents, I'm going to add those x to the second power times x to the fifth power is x to the seventh power. If I look at the next one, it's the same thing. And uh, there's a 1 out front here. Uh, anytime I don't see a, a coefficient writ written, I know it's a 1. So I do 1 times 9, which is a 9. And then I do x uh, to the first power. Again, there's no exponent written, so it's x to the first. Times x to the second, I add the exponents. That's x to the third. And then here I've got y to the 1 half power. Uh, times y to the one third power, add those together, that's y to the, that would be three and a half when I added those together. But I don't write mixed numbers up here. I'm going to change that to an improper fraction. And when I change that to an improper fraction, it gives me a seven uh, halves. So I'm going to say, oops, sorry, y to the seven halves power. And that's it. And it's okay to have a rational exponent like that. Uh, for this one, uh, I've got uh, 2 times 5, which gives me a 10. I add the exponents. That's going to be an x to the 6th. And since y has nothing to, to be added to, it's like there's a y to the 0 out here, which is fine. I can put y to the 0 wherever I want in terms of multiplication because it equals 1. So when I add the exponents, it's y to the 2nd power. All right. So again, when I multiply, I add the exponents. The other rules of exponents we have when we raise something to a power, uh, we have to multiply the exponents. When we raise something to a power, we multiply the exponents. So I have a to the m power all raised to the n. I multiply the exponents, and it becomes a to the m times n. All right, so we multiply the exponents. Now, keep in mind, again, numbers are going to react the same way to the exponents that they've always reacted, so, so keep that in mind. So when I look at this first guy, here I have 5a 
uh, to the third power, all raised to the second power. And there's two things being raised to the second power, the five that's in here and the a to the third that's in here. They're both being raised to the second power. Well, numbers raised to the second power, that doesn't change. Five to the second power is 25. It's always been 25, and it will always be 25. And now a to the third, when I raise that to the second power, I multiply the exponents, so it's going to be a to the sixth. Okay, so again, that only applies to exponents. Numbers react the same way they always have, all right? And the next one, negative 3 to the third power is a negative 27. And now I multiply the exponents, that's x to the 21st. All right, so again, numbers still react the same way. Uh, in here, I have two things being raised, the negative 2 and the uh, y to the 11th. I raise the negative 2 to the fourth power, gives me a positive 16. Uh, and now I multiply the exponents, that's y to the 44th power. Okay? For this one, I've got multiplication and I've got exponents. I have to follow order of operations. So right here, the only thing that the uh, exponent of 2 is applying to is this guy right here in the parentheses. So I'm going to raise that y to the ninth and raise that to the second power. This guy's going to stay the same. So when I do that, I multiply the exponents. That's going to be a y to the 18th. Now I can go ahead and do the multiplication. Uh, so that's going to give me a 5. And now I add the exponents. That's a y to the 13th power. Okay. Here again, I start with the exponent. So the exponent is applying to, to these things that are inside these parentheses. So I'm going to raise each of those to the fourth power. When I do the, the 2 to the fourth power, it gives me a 16. Uh, here, this is an x to the first, so I multiply the exponents. That's x to the fourth. The y to the sixth, when I raise it to the fourth power, I multiply the exponents. That's a y to the 24th. And now from here, I can go ahead and do the multiplication. That's the other step. So when I multiply these things, I start with the number out front. That's going to give me a 32. I add the exponents. That's going to be an x to the 8th, uh, and then a y to the 14th. So again, numbers are still reacting the same way they always have, uh, but we're uh, doing something a little bit different with the exponents. Same thing here. I have to apply the exponents first. I have two exponents this time over here. Negative 2 to the third power is a negative 8. I multiply the exponents. That's a to the negative 12th. Uh, b to the 30th. In this other set of parentheses, I'm, I'm raising it all to the second power, so that's going to give me a 9, an a to the second, and a b to the 12th. Again, I'm multiplying the exponents. And now, uh, when I multiply, I multiply the numbers, that gives me a 72. I add the exponents, that's a to the negative 10th, and a uh, b to the, th the 42nd power. But now from here, I have a negative exponents. Remember, negative exponents flip to the other side of the uh, the, the fraction bar, and the only thing that that negative applies to is the a. So everything else stays in place. The 72 stays where it is. The b to the 42nd stays where it is. The only thing that gets sent down here is the, is the a to the 10th. Okay? And now I can write it as a positive exponent, and that's it. Our rules for dividing terms, remember we divide terms that have the same base. We subtract the exponents. So again, if I have a to the m divided by a to the n, I do a to the m minus n, so I subtract the exponents, all right? And uh, really, it makes sense with everything else we've done. When I've raised something, uh, when, I'm, when I multiply two things, I add the exponents, raise it to a power, I multiply the exponents. And now here, when I divide, I subtract the exponents. And really, essentially, everything is one step back in order of operations. So when I look at this, again, numbers react the same way they always have. 4 divided by 2 gives me a 2. And now I subtract the exponents. a to the 4th divided by a to the 2nd is an a to the 2nd b to the third divided by b to the fourth is a b to the negative first. But now I have a negative exponent that I need to take care of. So this becomes a 2a squared. That stays where it is. The b to the first gets sent to the denominator. And I don't even need to write the 1 now that it's positive uh, because I can make that kind of an invisible exponent. Uh, it's assumed that it's a 1. All right? Same thing here. I, I do some division. That's a negative 5 thirds. Uh, again, I'm dividing that, but I just leave it as a fraction. Again, this is an x to the first, so when I subtract, that gives me an x to the sixth. And now here when I subtract, just be very careful, it's a negative 5 minus 9, which is going to give me a negative 14. And now in terms of this, uh, I have a, a negative 5 and the x to the sixth stay in the numerator. The denominator has the, the 3 and now the y to the 14th. I send that negative exponent to the denominator, and uh, that's what allows me to make it a positive exponent. Okay? If I look at this one, same thing, there's a 1 out front here. So that's going to be a 1 eighth, 
uh, I subtract the exponents, that's x to the 13th. Uh, that's going to be a y to the uh, 16th. Again, be careful, uh, 10 minus a negative 6 is like adding the opposite. And then here, this is a z to the 1st, uh, so that's going to give me a z to the negative 3rd. Uh, all right, now I take care of the negative exponents. So in my numerator, I've got the 1, which I don't need to write, the y to the, the x to the 13th, the y to the 16th. Now in the denominator, the z to the 3rd. And that's it. And then in this last one, again, I divide negative 2 divided by 8 is actually a negative 1 fourth if I reduce that. I subtract the exponents. That's going to be an a to the negative 15th. Uh, then a b uh, to the 4th. And now the tricky part here is the c value, because I don't see a c value in the numerator. Remember, if there's no c value, it's like a c to the 0 power, when you think about it, uh, which means when I subtract the exponents, that's a c to the negative 4th, okay? Uh, which makes sense, because now what's going to happen is I'm just going to send this thing right back down to the denominator. Uh, that's going to give me, in my numerator, a negative 1 uh, b to the 4th. In the denominator, I have that uh, 4, so I missed the 4. Let me grab that 4. I've got the a to the 15th, and then I've got the c to the 4th power. So it started in the denominator, and now it's back in the denominator. And if you don't want to move it at all, you don't have to do that subtraction with the exponents. But it's just another way to think of it. All right. So remember, your rules of exponents, uh, anything to the 0 power is 1. Uh, a negative exponent makes us flip to the other side of the fraction bar. Uh, multiplying uh, two things, we add the exponents. Dividing, we subtract the exponents. And raising it to a power, we multiply the exponents. Okay?